Hey everyone, I'm building an entire first-person shooter game from scratch in the Gato engine and documenting the progress with these tutorials. In this video, we're creating a procedural idle animation for our weapons. The basic FPS controller project from episode one is available for free on GitHub. And if you would like to download all of the source files, you can get access by joining my Patreon. Let's dive in. The goal for this episode is actually pretty simple. We want our first person shooter weapons to move ever so slightly when the player is not moving. This adds to the immersion and realism of the game, and we can do this pretty easily using procedural animation. When I say procedural, it just means we're going to be moving our weapon mesh using pure code and mathematics. You can absolutely create idle animations by hand, but if you can offload that work to code and replicate it for every weapon, you're gonna save yourself a lot of time. In the last episode, we made a sway animation for when we look around with the mouse. We're going to tie into this sway animation function to add our idle sway. The concept is this. We'll manipulate our X and Y position of our mesh and the X and Y rotation of our mesh like we already do with our sway. But while our sway is dependent on our mouse movement, the idle movement will use three parts, two sine waves and a noise texture. The sine waves will give us a pulsing movement on both our X and Y values, and we'll offset these to help give some variation. Then we'll use the noise texture to randomize the effect even further. Because we're doing this with code, it means we can make it scalable for our different weapon types. This means creating idle movement parameters that we can set per each weapon. Within my weapon resource script, I've added three new export variables and added one export variable for scale that Honestly, I should have added earlier. Idle sway adjustment will adjust our random sway amount. Idle sway rotation strength adjusts the strength of the rotation and random sway amount adjusts our sine strength. I've set mine with default values of 10, 300, and five. With these new variables, you can now customize your idle animation settings for each weapon type you create. The idle animation code will be added to the initiate weapon script and full disclosure, Eventually, the script will probably be turned into a state machine of sorts for our weapon, and the code will be cleaned up then. For now, we'll house this feature in this script. First, we create some new export variables. Sway noise for our noise texture, sway speed to adjust our overall idle animation speed, and six new variables, random sway x and y, random sway amount, idle sway adjustment, and idle sway rotation strength to grab our weapon resource specific variables we just created and a time variable that we'll use for our sign based animation. Within our load weapon function, where we set our weapon specific information from our weapon resources, we set our idle sway adjustment, idle sway rotation strength, and random sway amount, and also our scale. The next step is to get a value from our noise texture based on the location of the player in our world. This will help add randomization as the player moves around a level. Using a noise texture is a great way to get randomization because we simply can get a value based on any X and Y values. And our player location is perfect for that. We create a new function, get sway noise, that will return values between negative one and one based on the player's world position. We create a player position vector three variable, then set that position to our player global position. And we also only run this when in game, or you're gonna get a bunch of annoying warning errors every single frame. Then we get a noise location value by using the get noise 2D on our noise texture with the X and Y positions of our player. Finally, we return this value. Returning here means running this function will produce this value. In our sway weapon function, we need to call our get sway noise function and adjust its strength with our idle sway adjustment. Remember, we can adjust this noise strength then for each weapon with this variable. We have our noise adjustment ready. We just need to create our base movement. This movement will come from two sine waves. First, we need to get how much time has elapsed because the wave will progress as our time progresses. We set our time to plus equals delta. Then we add our sway speed variable so we can increase or decrease the number of waves and add our sway random to add some randomization as we move around the level. Our first wave will equal the sine value of time multiplied by 1.5, this makes it a bit quicker, plus our random sway noise value divided by the amount of random sway we want. Our second wave is similar, except we don't multiply by 1.5, 
and we subtract our random sway noise value, then divide by the random sway amount. Now you might be asking why all these adjustments? Well, a sine wave is predictable and repetitive, and we want to break up that repetition as realistically as possible while keeping the general back and forth movement. That can be done by changing the amount of waves and by offsetting the waves. Doing this will keep our animation from, well, looking boring. With our random sway ready, we need to add it to our already existing sway movement code. To do that, we simply add our random sway values to their respective lines. For our X position, we add our random sway X, and the same for our Y position. Then for our rotation, we add our random sway Y multiplied by the idle sway rotation strength variable, and ditto for the X rotation. We're now adding our random idle movement to our XY position and XY rotation based on our two sine waves and the player position. And with our variables, we can control how fast or pronounced that movement is. One final tip to help set your idle sway values, add a reset boolean in your initiate weapon script where you can run the load weapon function in the editor. Then whenever you click on the checkbox, it reloads the values. All right, guys, if this tutorial was helpful, consider a like and subscribe to the channel as we're gonna be covering a lot more Thanks to all of my patrons who keep this series going. You too can get access to the project source files by joining my Patreon. You can download everything there and you'll also get early access to my videos and sneak peeks at future tutorials. Thanks for watching and as always, keep creating.